Good morning. Welcome to day seven of the Spring into Simple Decluttering Challenge. I'll just make sure that everything looks good on the video end and then we'll get started for today's task. Okay, perfect. Okay, so day, today is day seven. That means we are officially halfway through the challenge. Um, so if you've stuck with it, you should be really proud of yourself. This is this is huge. Decluttering every day for a week is a huge start. That's fantastic. So you can be really proud of yourself. And I also think it's a good time halfway through the challenge to kind of pause and notice. Are you seeing a difference in the way your home looks, feels, and functions? Are you noticing the results of your hard work? Is your bathroom functioning better? Do you see a little bit less clutter around the house? Like think about those things because it really helps motivate you and encourage you to keep going when you notice and appreciate the results of the work you've already put in. So I'm proud of you for making it this far. Today we're going to continue working in the kitchen. Um, today we're going to tackle the everyday dishes and glassware. So one thing I've noticed is when you have more dishes and glasses than you need, it's really easy to get a new one each time you want to eat something or have a drink. And it leaves you with a lot of dirty dishes at the end of the day. And when you reduce the number of dishes and glasses that you have available, you'll actually end up with fewer dishes to wash at the end of the day. Um, this might mean that you and your family reuse a glass throughout the day instead of getting a new one each time you need a drink or, you know, give a plate a quick, quick rinse and use it again. But basically, when you have fewer, instead of having the option of just grabbing a new glass or a new plate every time you need it, you kind of think a little more mindfully and maybe reuse some of those things or, you know, you just don't use as many and you just end up with fewer dirty dishes at the end of the day. So this seems a little scary. I know at first some people are a little hesitant about this one, but really being honest about what you actually need for you, your family, your preferences, your lifestyle, your dishwashing situation, and just challenging yourself to be a little bit more ruthless with what you keep out and what you get rid of. Um, I know some people keep only one place setting per person in their family, which can work great, especially if you hand wash dishes, you just, after each meal, you quickly wash them and then they're ready to go for the next one. Um, other people like to keep enough for the day and then they load them in the dishwasher and run the dishwasher at night. So deciding what works for you. Um, there's no right amount, but just figuring out what works for you and then maybe challenging yourself if you could go have a little less. Could you have a little less? Could you get by with a little bit less? Would that mean fewer dishes to deal with, fewer dirty dishes to wash? Um, so yeah, just really challenging yourself and seeing what would happen if I had fewer dishes and, you know, would reusing that glass throughout the day save times however many people in your in your home and your family, how much time would that save you at the end of the day instead of like 15 drinking glasses to deal with if you only had four or five? And just thinking about how that would change things for you. And now one question that often comes up when I suggest this in the decluttering challenge is what about when you have guests? What do you do if you only have enough dishes for each person in your house or you have, you know, just a smaller amount of dishes? What do you do when you have guests? And that is a very good question. And basically what I have found to work the best is you keep your everyday dishes and glasses out in like their normal accessible spot where they're easy to grab from. And then you can keep your extra dishes kind of somewhere a little bit less convenient, a little bit, you know, that it would be kind of tricky to grab so that you won't grab them all the time, a little bit out of the way, somewhere a little less convenient so that when you do have company, you have a few extra dishes and glasses that you can pull out, but for everyday use, you're not really getting into those. Um, so they're still available for hosting, but they're just not in your everyday cupboard so that you just don't use them on an everyday basis. And then when you're doing this with um, thinking about dishes for hosting, I still encourage you to be really ruthless and honest about how many you actually need. We don't wanna just shuffle the clutter from our everyday cupboard to a different spot in our house. We wanna be really honest, like how many people do you actually host usually? How often do you host? How many dishes and glasses do you actually need for hosting? 
if you were hosting a bigger crowd than normal, like what else could you use? Could you use paper plates in those few scenarios, that kind of thing? Just really challenge yourself to be as ruthless as you can so that we don't end up shuffling clutter from one spot to another. So um, this is another time if you have, you know, fancy glasses for different types of drinks, this is another time that you can be really honest and realistic with yourself. Like, do you actually use all those different types of glasses for the different types of drinks? Could you use you know, some of the glasses for multiple things, multiple purposes, rather than having specific glasses for specific drinks? Um, could they serve multiple purposes? Um, just thinking about those three th things, thinking about your coffee mugs even. Um, you know, do you, is there, has there ever been a time where you need 50 coffee mugs all at the same time? Or do you usually need like four or five coffee mugs when you're hosting guests or that kind of thing? So just really challenging yourself to start thinking about like, when would I actually use all these things? Do I actually use all these things? Do I have more than I use and need? Could I get by with less? Would it make life easier with less? Would that mean we have fewer dishes to deal with? And I have done this and it works so good. We have, um, we have a set of eight dishes for our family. I have broken a few because that seems to be my <laughs> my thing is I like to break dishes apparently. So um, we have the set, we started with the set of eight and we might have a few less now. I don't know exactly how many I've broken, but it has worked so well. You know, we have, they can all fit in the dishwasher at the end of the day easily. They all fit in there easily. It's not like we don't have to cram them in. Um, we reuse throughout the day, especially with um, glasses. My kids especially had a tendency to grab a new glass every time they wanted a drink. And now when I have fewer glasses available for them, they often reuse them or reuse the same water bottle throughout the day. So it's really helped make life a lot easier in our house. Just having fewer options has really made a difference. And then I keep um, some dishes that we use for when we have company in a different spot and some glasses we use when we have company up, kind of up high so they're not easily accessible and that works really well then when, when we have company we still have um, dishes that we can pull out and use but we don't need them cluttering up our cupboard and getting used on an everyday basis and just creating a lot more dirty dishes and I have to say like on the few occasions where we have run out of dishes during the day it's interesting because you always figure it out you either quickly wash something or you you know, I have even put like um, my kids snacks on a paper towel instead of giving them a plate if we've run out. And it's just funny because you kind of have to just trust your future self to figure it out. Maybe you'll use instead of a bowl for your cereal, like you could use a Tupperware container in the worst case scenario, that kind of thing. Like trust your future self to figure it out. There's always a solution if you're just willing to get a little bit creative. You don't need to have tons of extra stuff for every what if, just in case scenario, you will figure it out. And this is also um, a great activity to use your maybe box for. If you're unsure about getting rid of your extra dishes, if that feels a little scary or you're just not totally convinced about it, use a maybe box. Put the extras in your maybe box, seal it and put it away and put a reminder in your phone for one to three months from now. And when you get the reminder, if you haven't needed those extra dishes, you've proven to yourself that you can get by just fine without them. So it's a great way to experiment living without those extra dishes to see how it goes, to see if you miss them, to see if you really need them. So it can also encourage you to be a lot more ruthless and just kind of give you that safety net of, to know that you're not permanently getting rid of them until you've trialed living without them. So that's for today's task. I encourage you to do it you can in the time you have. Remember, we're not tackling your entire kitchen today. We're just focusing on those everyday dishes and glassware. And we'll continue doing one small step at a time so that it's manageable and easy to catch or keep up with. And again, I just really encourage you to be open to trying things. Be open to experimenting living with less. Just try having fewer dishes and see what happens. Um, you know, just think about what might work for your family. Maybe challenge yourself to be a little more ruthless and just don't be afraid to try it. You can always go back, especially if you've used the maybe box. But in the meantime, you can just kind of encourage yourself to, to try it. See how it goes. See what happens. You know, 
lots of this is just an experiment to try living with less and see what happens. So I encourage you to do that. If you have any extra time today, if you've tackled dishes, glassware, mugs, those kinds of things, and you want to go on to another category of stuff, by all means, um, cooking and baking dishes is a great thing to tackle if you need an idea. But for now, just focus on the everyday dishes, do what you can with the time you have, and do the best you can. So keep sharing your progress in the group. Uh, if you have any questions that come up, let me know. You can leave them in a comment under this video and I'll talk about them in tomorrow's video. I'll be back here tomorrow for an, another video at 9.30 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. And I we're still working in the kitchen tomorrow. So we'll be doing some more kitchen tasks. And I wanted to quickly touch on a question that has come up in other challenges. And I think it's a really good question. And it's, what to do about how do you get rid of perfectly good things? So sometimes when you're decluttering, you have stuff that you don't use, you don't need, but it's still perfectly good. It's still in great condition, totally usable. How do you kind of reconcile getting rid of those perfectly good items? And this is tricky because it's easy to want to keep those because they're still perfectly good. But that can be where a lot of clutter comes from. If you're not using it and you're not needing it, it's not adding value to your life. So this is kind of a mindset shift to take with this one. If it's not, even though it's perfectly good and perfectly useful, it's not being used by you. So it's not adding value to your life. It's just adding extra stuff to your home. So think about instead of holding on to these perfectly good things just because they're perfectly good, Pass them on to someone else who can use them because you're not using them. Even though they're perfectly good, you're just not using them. So pass them on to someone else and know that they will be used and appreciated by someone else instead. So choose your favorites. Let go of the extras. And I often like to think if we come into this with like an abundance mindset or a gratitude mindset, maybe thinking about like, all the gratitude you have that you are so blessed you have more than you actually use and need you have enough that you can share it with someone else who maybe doesn't have enough so all of these perfectly good things you're not using them they're not useful to you pass them on to someone else and kind of bless them in their lives giving them the opportunity to use the things that you're not so i hope that helps that question comes up a lot i hear it um quite often in different forms so i hope that helps today especially when we're dealing with everyday dishes and glasses because these are, you know, they're perfectly useful. But if you just have more than you use and need, it's not adding value to your life and it's actually adding clutter. So go ahead and tackle today's decluttering task. I can't wait to see who is ready to kind of challenge themselves to live with less. I'm excited to see the progress. Uh, if you have any questions, like I said, just leave a comment and let me know and I will see you back here tomorrow at 930 again. So take care everybody and happy decluttering.